Let's go over costing methods. Inside of inventory, as a quick refresher, we'll go into our product categories and we'll just click into one of our product categories and we'll notice that there are three different costing methods that we talked about previously. There are standard price, first in, first out, and average cost. In this video, we're gonna go over an example of each of them inside of a spreadsheet so we can see what kind of effects each one of the costing methods have. Before we do that, as a quick mention, under reporting inside of valuation is where you're going to see the value of all of your products inside of one report. This is defaulted to group by product, but we can also remove this filter and group by product category if we so choose. So here we have all of our different transactions that have occurred so far. Now let's go over to our spreadsheet so we can see the example. Now on the left side of our screen, we have three different purchases that we've created. And on the right side of our screen, we have the effects on three different sales that might occur for each different costing method. So we have average cost, first in, first out, and standard. So in this example here, we've done all of our purchasing first. We purchased our item for $30, then we purchased it for $25, and then we purchased it for $20. So our, we have a true value for our inventory of $75. So let's take a look at what happens when we use average cost. So average cost is going to set the product templates cost at the average of all of the in-stock inventory. So the average of all of the in-stock inventory is $25, rather uh, is $25, so our stock valuation will be 75. And we can go into the system to verify this. So back in the system here, if we look at average cost, we purchased the first unit for 20, or rather for 30, then 25, and then 20. So our stock valuation is $75 for our average cost product category. If we go into the product, our product two average cost, we'll see that the cost on the product is $25. So the system is automatically going to update this cost price to be the average cost of the current in-stock inventory. Now, we're doing this in a simple manner where we purchased all the units first with different pricing and then we sold them for uh, one by one to see the different effects. Now, as you see here, the product template is going to be $25 right now and then we would sell one and our stock valuation will drop to 50, but our product template will remain as $25 and then sale three occurs so our stock valuation will update to 25 and our, or rather our sale two occurs and our stock valuation will update to 25 and our product template will still be $25. But if we decided to purchase another unit and this time that unit cost us, for example, um, let's say we only have sale three left. So we, we completed these two, we have one unit in stock with a value of $25. And then we decided to purchase one more unit in between this. Then this is purchase four and we say sale four. Now the value of our inventory at sale three is going to increase. The product template cost price is now going to be the average price of 75, or rather 125. So let's make this easy and say 75. So the product template at this point, the total value of our two items that we purchased, so purchase three and four, is going to be $50. And then our stock valuation is going to update to $100. Because our average price before was $25 when we had one unit left and the new purchase price was $75, the average cost for the two is $50, which will give us a total stock valuation of $100. And then when we sell the next unit, the product template will still be 50, but our stock valuation will update to $50. And then the, we'll continue until we zero or net this out to zero. And then once we net this out to zero at, after this, our stock valuation will be zero, but our product average cost will just stick to 50 for now until we purchase new items. If we purchase another item, purchase number five for or let's say $20, this will overwrite and the one unit in stock will be worth $20. Next, we have our first in first out. So I'm gonna remove these. We don't need to look at that anymore, and let's just delete these lines. 
So I'll put back our cell one and our cell two, and we'll remove our cell four. So now in first in first out, this is actually an update in Odoo 17. Our product template is going to show us the average cost of the units that we have in stock. However, as we sell the units, that average cost is gonna update based on first in first out principles. So for example, we purchased three units for a total of $75 here. Before the first sale, our product template is going to reflect $30. Our total cost is going to be $75, just like an average cost. Then when we sell unit one, in, based on our first in first out method, this $30 is going to update. So now our product template is not going to reflect the 30 anymore. It's going to reflect the average price between the 25 and $20. So this should actually be 2250. Then we're going to sell this unit and this should be updated. So the average price would be 22, or this is 55 for 2250 times two. And then sale three will occur. And then sale three, or before sale three occurs, our average cost for the single unit based on first in first out principles is going to be $20, which will reflect for sale three. And the system keeps track of all of our purchase history and the fact that we're doing first in first out. So inside of our reporting and our stock valuation, we see for first in first out, we have a total value of $75. The first unit costs us 30, the second 25, and the third 20. And if we went to our product, we'll see a total initial value of $25 for the average cost of the three units. Now in previous versions of Odoo, this would have stayed at whatever the first in first out method calls. So it would have been originally $30, then updated um, to $25, and then updated to 20. But in Odoo 17, a more accurate depiction of the total cost is going to be reflected on the cost price inside of the product, which is going to be $25. Now for standard price. Let's delete this so we can focus on standard price here. Standard price is obviously the easiest to understand. The product template is always going to stay the same. So inside of our products here, standard price, $20. So our stock valuation, under standard price shows $20 for each unit regardless of what we actually purchased it for. So here we'll have $20, our stock valuation is 60. Sale two, still $20, our stock valuation is 40. And sale three, $20, and our stock valuation is 20. Now it's important to note that at any time you can come in and update your standard cost. There's some residual effects, but just for the purposes of keeping this simple, Let's say that we updated it before sale two to say the sale, the cost price is $40. Now our stock valuation is gonna immediately increase to 80. And here this will increase to 40 and 40. So whatever we set on that product is going to reflect the actual cost that the system is recording inside of your valuation. One last thing to mention is that the actual units that you utilize, whether you're using serial numbers or not, does not directly correlate to first in first out or your costing methods. That's a different costing method, sometimes referred to as actual cost, which is not currently supported in Odoo 17, but maybe be supported in future versions. So that's an important distinction because some people get confused where we have on our product category, a removal strategy of first in first out, last in first out, closest location, least packages. But does that, that does not directly tie in with our costing method. So therefore, if I were to take a random product that was serialized and I said, I want to sell unit X that cost $20 as opposed to selling the first in first out one that cost $30, the system is not going to take in that $30 and say, okay, well, uh, rather, it's not going to take in the $20. We're not going to be able to sell the single unit that costs $20. It's going to take it based on 
our costing method here. So either standard price, first in, first out, or average cost. I hope that was all clear. In the next couple of videos, we're gonna go through real world examples inside the system, looking at all of the journal entries that get created. The purpose of this video was to give you some understanding inside of this spreadsheet so we can play with the numbers in a more simple view.